Hi guys, Oliver here from Spitfire Audio. I hope you're doing well. You might have seen our Black Weekend teasers out there. And in this video, I want to show you how I've created the music for them following a brief. A brief that was set by an external director and a production company. So it was a bit of a, a different relationship this time. And so that's why I thought I'd share my experience because it's kind of a real life situation when you work for an ad campaign or a TV show or even a film sometimes. Uh, so the first thing I was given was this document. The music we use across the series will be composed into a single piece to be used on the sale campaign trailer. We can use the individual chapters to consider how the music will develop over the span of 60 seconds. So and here he's included a uh, first reference. So as you can see, they're after a sweet first. So they want to make sure I hit the direction right. Uh, they want to make sure the overall tone of the project is correct. So that's quite a common thing that uh, composers deliver a suite or a main theme just to see whether um, the production company and the director and everyone is happy with the direction it's going into. The slight difference in structure for the teasers is that they develop, peak and conclude within a short time frame. For the trailer, we can take various elements from the suite you create to compose an extended version. Now, the teasers were already in the works and I've had some low-res early stage pictures to work to. Now, I'm going to show them to you and then I'm going to read to you uh, the further notes that the director gave me. The track should slowly build across the series. Starting off non-melodic with the use of extended notes or drone sounds that build tension. I always like the unsettling atmosphere created by detuned instruments but used very subtly. The atmosphere should be unnerving but not horror vibes, just enough to create a sense of suspense. So then the director gives another musical reference. He wants a subtle undulating rhythm over those 15 to 20 seconds uh, pictures. And he includes this following reference. So then for the next part of the suite, which the director imagines is the teaser number two, he says the following. The rhythm builds into teaser two and becomes more percussive. There's a distinct sense of energy in teaser two as the sphere falls to earth and I want the audience to feel that momentum, but not in a typical Hollywood trailer fashion. Possibly the sound of toms or a low syncopated string instrument. Cello? Question mark. Then for the end of the suite, so teaser number three, uh, the director has the following in mind. Bear in mind, this one is, of course, just a work in process animation. As we switch to the perspective from the ground, we can revert back to a more low energy composition, like the break after a classic trailer drop. We slowly build the tension back up to the final reveal of the sphere, but instead of being ominous, it should have an uplifting emotional energy. Hans Zimmer's use of organs on Interstellar is a great example for this. So here we have a reference to Hans Zimmer's Interstellar. So I experience myself a lot of reference to Hans Zimmer's music, whether it's uh, Time or Interstellar. And I think the tricky thing is obviously not to exactly rip off the track, but get what kind of emotion the director is after. And then you can kind of work with that and you can use totally different chords or different instruments. It's just kind of this, as the director says, this uplifting emotional kind of energy. And uh, this is the drop, by the way, he was referring to as well. And everyone to be a top boy. 
You are. Yeah. Now we have our mind set. Um, I've chosen the colors I want to paint with, and uh, let's see what I've come up with for the sweet version number one. So trying to follow the references and the wishes of the director, I have here a tonal Atmos start uh, using our eDNA library here. It's tonal, but this, I think, to a director will be, this is atmosphere kind of sounds, you know, this doesn't imply a heavy a note in that, in that sense. Then I have this steam loop, so here I want to achieve this undulating rhythm that kind of starts coming in. So I've treated it a little bit, so I've filtered it out to make it a bit more ominous. Um, I really like this Albion 3 Iceni library here for these loops, the Flight B loops. Um, I'm just going to play you a little bit here. It's pretty cool. There's some other really amazing ones. This Stress Monkey, I, I remember using it a lot in, in my compositions. So, but for this one, I'm using this Steam Loop uh, filtered out here. And you will see later on the sound develops a little bit in, in, in next versions and uh, the teaser versions. Um, then I have this Distant Explosion here. EDNA as well. Just this atonal alien kind of sound. And then he, I also had a chat with him and he, the, the brief is pretty good and co uh, comprehensive. And um, he added a couple of things such as he likes a note that is not quite in tune. So I went over to the LCO uh, Contemporary Orchestra Strings Library here, uh, Woozy Vibrato. So I thought that might drift in and out of, of the note of tune a little bit there. and then all the elements for the intro together. So I think that's kind of pretty ominous and uh, let's go back to the to the brief quickly so we can see it should slowly build across the series starting off non-melodic which I think it is extended notes or drone sounds that build tension, detuned instruments, atmosphere. Uh, so for me, that hits it pretty well. And then I'm bringing in some next elements here. I'm bringing in this Albion 5 Colenio Trazzo. That's when they play with the back of the bow. And actually, I'm going to just play you a little bit because that sound is just incredible. It's 
it's fantastic. For those of you who watch, uh, or who have watched several of my tutorials, you can tell if I compose kind of freely or I can use whatever library I want, I seem to go back to similar kind of sounds uh, because over the time you start to realize which one sounds good uh, in samples. This is definitely one of my favorites. I'm using some more LCO effects here. This one is actually textures grid, so LCO textures. Wow, this is just magical. This is recorded in, a, in an old uh, aeroplane hangar, so uh, check it out as well if you have the time. So then um, using some more uh, London Contemporary Orchestra strings, some twitchy effects here, which I quite like as well. Then I'm using some more straightforward sounds here, or strings. I mean, I'm saying straightforward, but these are consort and silken longs. So these are also kind of extended techniques. But I think nowadays in, in film music, and especially over here in Europe, this kind of sound is just so uh, sought after. So that's pretty nice sounding and I'm actually just playing the ensemble so I'm not programming viola or violin or cello separately in and also because in this composition the strings aren't my main part I just want this warmth and this kind of 3D-ness behind the composition. I'm using other strings, uh, Abbey Road here. I'm just going to play you all those Abbey Road strings together. They sound pretty lush too. I'm using the Longs Consort. So pretty cool sound right there, Abbey Road 1, Albion 5 and LCO strings together and creating this new kind of different string sounds. I'm using this Albion 1 octave longs. I like using them a lot, they just give such a nice bottom end. Very majestic right there. These short ones here to give um, a little bit of uh, power and drive. So if you recall in Hans Zimmer's time track or Interstellar, in Interstellar you have the organ, in time you have the guitar. Doing these shorter notes uh, or these arpeggiated notes. So I'm, I'm doing a similar concept here with the low staccato here of the Abbey Road strings. <laughs> Again, very low in the mix just to add, as said, energy. So then up here I'm using eDNA Tonal Atmos. just to stay in this realm of Atmos and the score being ominous. So then I'm using this Oliver Arnold's Sub 60 here, which I use a lot. I like to use a sub bass, even though I have a double bass in there. It just makes the score much bigger. And especially in a score like this, hybrid score, Sub 60, I believe, is a Juno 60, and it just has a very nice warm sound. Mm -hmm. 
using a tremolo, so it pulses. Uh, I'm flipping the face here, so it's not left, right, but kind of back and forward. And then I've made a percussion arrangement here. Retrospectively, not a huge fan of it. I'll show you what's, what's going to happen down the line, but I wasn't quite sure yet whether they want a lot. He was mentioning toms, etc. But anyway, here, here it is. Uh, Hans Zimmer percussion, and then I'm using this Albion 1 Brunel loops here. These Brunel loops are quite nice, so these percussive loops. Using a sample delay, so it's it's coming out from left and right. I believe it's called the Haas effect, uh, so without, it's down the middle. So you can hear the difference best when you're on headphones. So it's not a very mono sound anyway. I think it's got some delay uh, or maybe ping pong delay on it, but I'm just widening this sound a little bit. So towards the end, it gets a little bit bigger. Then Easter Island hits, big hits for big scores, big trailer scores. Uh, along those lines. Very useful, and I use them a lot. So I send this over to the director as Sweet version 1, and at this point, the producer jumps in and goes, how about using a little bit more modern elements, some Nick Cave, Warren Ellis, try some Albion Neo uh, Brunel loops there. How about some Oliver Arnold's Stratus as well? Just some sounds that have been produced more recently and just to, to add a bit of edge to it. And the director actually has some more ideas as well. So he sends me this reference. <laughs> And then he is also asking for some simple but highly emotional scoring. Do you copy? Yes, 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 I copy. I'm Give detached. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm spinning. I can't. I can't. Your uh, position. GPS is down. I can't. It's down. I can't. Uh, Give me a visual. Uh, Plus the director follows suit to the producer, which is of course ideal, and he sends me this reference. With these references in mind, and also the need for the track to be shortened, it's got to be 60 seconds, I've created this new version. So there's quite a bit of energy and power behind this one, and i show you what I've added. So Albion Neo, as suggested by the producer, and it's this really lovely library. You have the orchestra in there, for example. You have Brunel loops as well. You have a harmonium. You have Sigla textures, Stevenson textures. So these are all quite, you know, neoclassical, modern, contemporary sounding sounds, in my opinion. So, for example, this driving arp here. Pretty cool. Then this driving ARP organic, which I'm actually using later on. I put a bit of distortion on it. This, for some reason, sounds very much like Nick Cave and Warren uh, Ellis to me. I have this loop here, distortion on it as well. I put quite a bit more distortion on things, as you can tell.
I've mixed this one in with my beats or my rhythm down here, which I'll show you in a second. I have this edge of the cliff Brunel loop here as well to give a little bit more energy in the beginning. And then I'm using quite a lot of Stratus instances. So if you're not familiar with Stratus, please go and check it out. It's, it's insane. It's Oliver Arnold's project that he's used on the last couple of albums. It's a software that aleatorically chooses different loops, simplified, explains. So I'm just going to play it and then you hear what I mean. So it's, it works with piano and synthesizers. So here I'm using the synthesizers. just insanely beautifully produced and then we have swarms as well I mean you can literally play anything and it sounds good we have more kind of specific rhythms and again check it out um, on, on our website you can play with this GUI as well and do all sorts of changes I'm literally just playing it out of the box right now I mean, you get the idea, and uh, all together it sounds like this. You can hear it quite well, actually, in, in, in my piece. It's quite high in the mix. So it sounds a little bit wonky, but I quite like it. It has it's certain it has a certain something to it. And then what I've done is a complete new percussion arrangement. So I've muted my old one here, as you can see, and I've just taken inspiration from this reference and created like an army of drums here. And so on. So this uh, massively exaggerated kick or hit is a, just a distorted Easter Island hit here. But I must say, I quite love it. <laughs> Epic stuff. And then the rest is kind of Hans Zimmer percussion. Uh, toms low, surdos, rototoms, um, bombos. I'm actually using a kick here, quite an electronic sounding kick. So this one there, so it gives a little bit more oomph as well. And then I'm using Tycho's here as well. Just playing it to you because they're one of my favorite percussion sounds of the Hans Zimmer percussion library. And they're all kind of ticking along, but all together they create this big army of drums here. So, and then that's pretty much it. I've muted some of the Abbey Road strings down here. Not because I don't like it, but I thought if I add a lot more elements here, I need to make a little bit of space, otherwise it becomes overcrowded in the mix. And I thinned out a little bit the strings because I have these moving rhythms here going on and these moving Oliver Arnold's Stratus sounds, and they're quite busy and uh, sometimes uh, quite can appear quite thick in the mix. So I hope you like it as well. The producer and the director really loved this one. And then I went on and created the teaser versions. So then finally, I got sent this really wonderful and amazing animation. And of course, I all I needed to do was to adjust the timings of my piece because they love the sound, etc. And so in the end, this teaser number one sounded like this. So all I've done here was taken the intro of my suite and then before the big drop, just kind of cut it off. I have a bit of Atmos here. Uh, one thing that's quite important with this steam loop here, I've added um, 
a little bit of EQ, made it a bit more prominent and I've added this cool plugin here called Max Bass and I, I set this PC laptop preset there, turn it up a little bit and so when you, because this is meant to be on the phone and it just finds its way better to your ears through the iPhone or Android uh, speakers. That's pretty much the only thing I've altered and uh, teaser number two sounds like this. So again here, just slight alterations. Uh, the chord changes were a little bit faster because the picture is shorter, so I have them over two bars, not over four. And here, right in the end, I'm enhancing a little bit the picture, this low droning sound when, when the orb comes down. And actually, at first I had a version where I brought in the percussion again when you could see the orb through the clouds, but I thought that would be the obvious thing to do. And it's kind of more effective just having this low rumbly sound when this orb comes towards you. And I think that's pretty much it. I've added subtle things such as distortion onto my sub bass here or a bit of echo here on my solo cello. By the way, the solo cello, I haven't mentioned. It's from the alternative solo strings and I'm using these long alternative notes and that's pretty cool. Have a listen. really amazing and if you feel well this is too random for me then you just use the normal longs and it's just well normal longs it's a very dry sounding cello uh, it's recorded in our spitfire studios but uh, that's the point of it so you can do a lot of production to it and it has this very honest and edgy sound really Nick Cave, Warren Ellis kind of sound. Uh, here, for example, I'm using, this is actually not old, this is long. Always make sure to really name your tracks correctly. It helps with organizing and mixing and sharing uh, sessions, etc. So here in the beginning, I didn't want any of those alternative notes. So I just used longs and then switched over to alternative. And that's said here, right in the end, I'm adding a bit of echo here just so it hangs over. I didn't want to Mickey Mouse this cut too much right here in the end. Um, I wanted to give more context because the orb is kind of still mu moving. It's still, it's only changing perspective. So that was the thought behind it and uh, the director supports it, the idea. So, and before you go away, uh, amazing news, we're going to give those two teasers away for you to score. Uh, you can include them in your portfolio, just score them for fun, set your own brief, etc. Please check in the description below how to download them. Check out the final version of the trailer as well, which uh, was uh, a version of the suite. And check out all the Black Weekend promotion, etc. If you have any questions, please let us know. We're happy to help you um, enjoy your Black Weekend. Have fun and see you next time. Bye-bye.